Good morning, all. Today I thought I'd talk a little bit about how we can save parameters, settings for an application, and then reload them when the system is restarted. There are a variety of approaches, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how we can do this using the registry, so it's actually saved locally on the PC. There are other approaches we'll discuss in the future, but today we'll concentrate on uh, using the registry to store information. So let's dive in. So what I'd like to talk to you about today is how we can actually store information, parameters, settings, preferences, in the registry, in your computer's registry. And it gets tied to an application or gets tied to the title that you're going to give it, but typically it's going to be some type of application name. And the beauty of what we're going to talk about today is this is native to VBA, which means what we're discussing here works in Excel, Word, Outlook. It doesn't make a difference. It's part of the VBA library. Therefore, it is accessible. The same functions will work in any of the other VBA programs. The other beauty here, because I know some of you are thinking in the back of your head, why would I save information to the registry when I can just use a table? Yes, that's true in Access, but that isn't true in Word. That isn't true in other applications. So yes, in Access, we have alternatives that may be more or less appealing, depending on your preferences. But note that what we're talking today is universal. And therefore, my library, I can just copy paste it into another application and I'm up and running instantaneously. If on the other hand, you're an Access developer and you build everything off of tables, which is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that in Access. But then you want to go and now do something similar in Word, you can't. So now you're going to have to redevelop and find another solution just for Word. Whereas this solution, you figured out once and now you're good on any application you want to work on. Um, so let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Yes, there are other ways of working with the registry. I'm not going to say this is the only way. But for the purposes of our discussion today, this is by far the best and easiest way to go about it. Now, if you need to start modifying the registry for other things, because you want to change database properties, you want to you know, change computer settings, things like that, well then yes, this is not the solution. You need to get into APIs, you need to get into different ActiveX approaches that allow you to man manipulate different hives. This is very uh, stringent. It only allows you to make entries, read, write entries in a very specific location. And I'll show you that in just a second. But it really is made for the one purpose of storing information about quote unquote an application. Um, well, you'll see it's we choose the name. So therefore, this can be accessed by different programs. It's not locked just to this database. It's locked by the name. So therefore, if you use that name, like in another application, you'll have access to the exact same information. So it isn't tied to access. If I create my settings here today in access, I could just as easily read them in Excel or Word. Um, that can be a good or a bad thing depending on how you view things. Okay, so enough talk, let's look at this. Um, so I have a very simple module and I have a series of procedures here. And they're all built, like I said, off of native procedures, uh, functionalities. Um, so we have save setting, get setting, get all settings, and delete setting. And if we look at, like I say here, we just pick one of them randomly and look it up. As I said here, you'll see down here, it's a member of the VBA interaction. So it's part of the VBA library. It's there natively. They all are, right? Get setting, get all setting, delete setting. And... If you check them out, as you can see, uh, the save setting at least has four parameters, which is more or less the most complex case, where you have to give it a name of the quote-unquote application. So the name you want to give to the main highest level registry key from which you're going to build everything underneath. And then section name. Well, section name is, that's exactly it. You can create sections. You can create groupings to save your parameters and settings. So it isn't necessarily just one big long list. You can group them into different information. You could have, you know, application parameters. You could have user parameters. You could have uh, preferences, or form preferences, report preferences. Whatever the case may be, whatever it is you're looking to store, 
you can group them. You can create logical groupings, which can facilitate uh, your process. Um, this also, it can be nice because it means sometimes that you can save the same name of a property, and I'm using property in quotes here, um, in multiple sections. So you could have, let's say, let's say you are storing parameters about every single form. Uh, you're wanting to store the X and Y position that way you can restore it to the exact same location every time for the user. Well, you could have your left and top values assigned in each section. So you could have, you know, form one, here's the left and the top. Form two, here's the left and the top. So you can repeat the what they call key as long as it's in a different section. If you repeat the key in the same section, well, you're actually overriding, you're overwriting the value. But you can have as many sections with basically the same key name. There's no issue there. And then you're going to have your setting name, uh, which is the key name, and then the setting value for that key. Enough talk. I uh, you know I'm babbling on here, so let's look at a couple concrete examples. And then we're going to go look at the registry to see exactly how these translate into reality. And then we'll look at retrieving the information and finally deleting information. So the first step, saving. Up here, I created a constant, which is the app name. So this is going to be the highest level, the main branch from which all the sections get built into. Um, I created functions here for the simple reason that now I can have one location where I define my app name, but it's then used in every single function thereafter. So this means that if I copy this into another database, Excel workbook, whatever the case may be, I only have one location to update the name, and now everything else has been updated in consequence. So this is just a time-saving, reduce the work. You'll also see uh, the error handling. I use my generic error handling. Now, let's look at creating an actual saving a setting. So we just take the function here. Why is it a function? Because it's going to return a Boolean. So it's going to tell me if it was successful at creating the entry or not, which can be very useful. So we can just come here. Let's bring this up a little bit. Save setting. Now, as you see, I don't have to supply the app name because it's already going to be supplied. So I can jump straight into the second input variable, which is a section name. So which section do I want to save the, the new key and value to? So let's just say main application. And as you can see, you can include spaces, but you don't have to either. It's a choice. And a key name. So let's say installed on. This time I choose not to use a space. And we'll just do now. And as you can see, it returned true. So it successfully saved that. You could then do anything you want, you know, top. Zero. Um, we could do sorting. And we could put here, you know, you could perhaps have a parameter where users get to uh, choose the type of sorting they want by default. Okay. So as you saw, all three of those settings were saved successfully which therefore means I should be able to retrieve them. And to retrieve them, I have a get registry setting. So let's just try one of them out quickly. And I did that very quickly. Let's try that again so you can actually see. It's going to ask the section name and the key that you want to retrieve. So if we just grab it from above, we should get back a value of descending. And we do. You can also use the get all registry setting. And if we do that, and you'll see here 
it asks for a section, so we'll try sorting. You get one value. Why did I get that error? Because it returns a variant. So I shouldn't be doing a question mark. I should be actually be doing uh, an array. There you go. And now I actually have it returned it to an array, so I can actually retrieve the information if I want from the array. Similarly, as we saw, that was the sorting. If I query the main application, our original section we were working with, I'll get all my values, all three of them. Now, I said this was stored in the registry. So let's double check that. And at the very top I put here, the registry values are saved, and they're saved in this hive area. So if we come down here and start typing reg, we'll get registry editor. Let's open that up. And if you come up here in the address bar, you can just delete what's there and just copy paste it. And you'll see we're brought to the proper location. And you'll see here application settings demo, which is the app name that I use throughout. And you just simply change this one location value here and it will update for your, your needs. So it will put it under whatever the name that you give it. So I chose application settings demo. So that's what appears in my registry this time. And then if you go underneath application settings, because like I said, that's the highest level. Everything gets put underneath it. We then come here and you see our section main application, and we see a section sorting. If we click on the sorting, you have the order by descending. And if you click on application, uh, you see the installed on left and top. So they are effectively saved in the registry. Now, one thing I will mention here, it's always stored as a string value. You see that in all instances. So it doesn't make a difference if you save a Boolean, a numeric, a string. It will always be saved as a string. And if you check here in the get setting, or even get settings, same case, you're going to see, I put some notes, it always returns a var type of VB string or a type name string. And therefore, it's up to us as developers to know what we're retrieving and use conversion functions as required. So if I know it's a bool, then I do cbool. If it's a date, I do cdate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But just know it's always returning a string. Then we work with it however we need to in our application. So we've gone over saving. We've gone over retrieving. What about if we want to delete an entry. Well, we have that option. And the delete has a particularity that if we include, as you see here, the optional, the key, well, then it will delete just that key. But if we do not supply a key and we only supply a section, then it's going to de de delete all of the keys within the section and that section included. So let's take a look at that. Let's try, let's try using the delete. The section we're going to use, we'll do the main application because we have several entries there. And then we, as you can see here, we have installed on top left. Let's delete left. And we press enter and it said true so it was successful and if we come back here and we click on it the left is now gone now we only have installed on and top okay so as you can see you can delete a singular entry but if we omit the particular key name that we're wanting to delete and we just say delete main application the section true it ran it was successful and we come back here we have to refresh, so we do an F5, but you'll see that section is now gone, leaving us with just with the sorting section. So as you can see, you can easily come and delete whatever you want, and you can be uh, as precise down to a key or an entire section in one shot. We'll do that again, and we come here, 
do an F5 again, don't forget to refresh. And now we have a blank registry entry for our application setting demo. And that's how easy and how hard it is to save settings to the registry for a particular application and retrieve them. So let's just come here. We're going to let's recreate the uh, sorting. So we recreated it. And we can double check it still is working. And we can double check in the registry if we come here with an F5. And sorting is back. Now let's have some fun. And just to prove case in point, let's copy this. And let's go into Excel. Let's go into the VBA. Create a module. And send it compiles properly. We have to remove the compare database. So, and let's try to get that registry. So let's come back here. We can just copy the same line. Like I say, that's the beauty. This will work in all of your VB applications without needing to change anything. And as you can see, I can use Excel to connect to that same registry. I can go get those same parameters if I want in multiple applications. So that can make it very useful too. Um, you could have parameters defined, let's say, on a form that gets saved to the registry, defining how data gets exported, let's say, to Excel. And then you can have an Excel where it reads the parameters and preferences of your users and applies them accordingly. So this is, like I say, one of the, the beauties here is the functions, the pr different procedures here, you can just copy, paste, drop them into place into Word, Excel, Outlook. It doesn't make a difference, and they just work. And as long as you use the same app, well, then you're able to retrieve the same information or give it a different name, and now you're able to save your information for your application in a particular location apart from all the other. So you can end up having entries for every single application you have if you need to. And that is as hard as it is and as easy it is to save information to the registry, retrieve it, delete it. Hopefully uh, this is something new and enlightening and I hope you can see how it can possibly be useful in an application, not just access, storing user preferences, storing application settings. The sky is the limit here. Uh, use your imagination. Think outside of the box. It really is a flexible and it's a safe way of uh, saving to the registry without ever having to worry about messing things up. Um, you know, if you get into APIs and other approaches, if you're not careful, you can really, really mess up a machine. You accidentally overwrite a value or you accidentally delete your know, registry keys. You can cripple a computer. So this is why this approach is a very safe approach. You're very restricted as to where you can work. And that's a great thing in reality for what we're talking about today. If you don't mind, leave me a comment below. If you, this is something you use, how do you use it? What type of values are you storing? And as always, thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Greatly appreciated. Um, if you don't mind, like, subscribe, share with your networks. Um, the more people view it, the more I'm able to do these types of things. Uh, anyway, we'll leave it there. Have a great day, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.